How is everyone? Good. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to invite our ministers here to introduce themselves because not ev- maybe not everybody knows everybody and how long they've been ministering. Is that one of the trick It's questions? a trick question, yes. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's, you have to click the little button up. There you go. Hi. It'll is take it, a moment. Is it good? Okay. It'll take a moment, Thomas says. Yeah. It should All be good right. now. It's warming up. Well, I'll just say it's good. Yep. Okay. What was the question? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so introduce yourself. <laughs> How long you've been ministering? Um, That'd be great. I, uh, my name's Vicki Vanderhorst, and uh, I've, well, officially ordained in 2015 and been a unity leader since 2000. I, I, was a, I was a member of Unity of uh, Victoria and served as spiritual leader there for a, a number of years, and that's my home church, so to speak. Then in 2009, moved to the Comox Valley, where I became the minister and the spiritual leader for Comox Valley. And I also serve on the Unity Canada board, and I'm also the mentor minister for Unity of Calgary, who is without a minister at the moment. How's that? That's good. <laughs> Hi, I'm Patricia Zogar. I'm minister here at Unity Vancouver Island, stationed in Nanaimo, let's put it that way. I've been ministering since 2001, and I was actually trained through Centers for Spiritual Living, which you'd say is the sister church of Unity. Uh, I served in Victoria, Winnipeg, Kelowna, and retired back to Nanaimo in 2013. And in 2016, I was hired... (laughs) At Unity. Hmm. I've got a mic. I'm special. I have a mic. He has his own mic. <laughs> uh, well, I'm Thomas DeShooter, and I have been a minister all of just over a year. Yeah. Yeah. And, and But I will say that I think we are all ministers, and we've all been ministering our whole lives, whether we're conscious of it or not. But there are people that lean on us or look to us as an example at certain times in life. And that is actually the definition of ministering. Uh, So we've all been ministers, all of us here. Yeah. Um, All right. Questions? Oh, well, let's just start with this one. I'll try not to edit them, but I might. Um, If you saw, and this isn't to, this is to all. So if you saw this church expand further into a direction we haven't ever done or haven't done in a long time, what would it be? Hmm. I'll go. <laughs> I had this, this vision shortly after the fire, actually. I said, why don't we just buy a big bus and go on the road? <laughs> um, but yeah, more public doing things out there like we talk about a concert series here on Sunday afternoons is great but why not big concerts of Victoria and Comox and yeah just really getting outside I guess one thing I would like to see is um, unity centers all over Vancouver Island because I know that the unity message is life transforming and people in Duncan and Ladysmith and Qualicum Beach and up on those northern ends of the island also could benefit. So even a study group of four or five people that who we could support um, and include as part of our spiritual community. Hmm. Yeah, and I I would agree with that. I think directionally, uh, I don't think we need to change anything, particularly on message. I think that, you know, I just went to Unity Village, and what I saw was the work of a couple of people that started this idea of healing themselves and built this incredible unity message they had never intended to do in the beginning. That's not what they were out to do. They were just out to heal themselves. And as a result, people were asking, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then from there, it grew. And as I was sitting on the grounds, I was thinking about that. Like This was imagination that got put into hyperdrive and just kept saying yes to the next thing. And I would like to see us get our message out and be, you know, not the best kept secret. 
in this area or down island or up island or mainland, wherever you want to put it. Okay. Oh, Reverend Vicky. <laughs> Define heaven. <laughs> Who put that in there? <laughs> Define heaven. Mm, okay. I think heaven for me is a place, it's an inside place where I have peace of mind, where I have a loving heart, where I have the ability to um, express equanimity in all circumstances and be centered, to not allow outside events or circumstances to um, blow me around like leaves in the wind. Um, and uh, it's obviously not another place, it's here right now. And I think all of us are capable of creating heaven on earth, um, right here, right now. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Stella, I'm a little concerned that this mic is much louder than the wireless, and the streaming might have a real discrepancy in the two volumes. Just, or turn that one up. Yeah, either or. Okay, this is to all. If Charles Fillmore was here today and you could ask him anything, what would it be? And this is from Elsie. Okay, I wonder whether Charles Fillmore today would call himself a Christian. This is a question that comes up for us over and over again. Are we Christian? Yes. Are we Christian? No. Um, probably half and half of us would say. So unity definitely was founded on Christian principles back then, but they meant to it for it to be relevant and useful, and they called it practical Christianity. Given the, the way the whole society has changed these days, I seriously question whether he and, and Myrtle would call themselves Christian. Yes and no. So that's an excellent thought for thinking. Yeah, that's a really good question. That's That would be certainly one for me. I think the other one would be uh, what, he, what he would be doing with his book, um, Adam Smashing Power, and the idea of quantum physics and the quantum field, and how much he would be loving the amount of science that has been brought into that, that he could uh, dig into and even expand further. Ditto. Ditto? Okay. <laughs> Ooh, this is to all. Does the church use only one Bible? Well, I know we each have our own, so I'll, I'll say that. that, that it's, it's, it's interesting. When I first came to Unity, there were bookshelves and bookshelves full of the minister's library. And included in that were about 20 different versions of the Bible, as well as the Koran. Um, as far as I know, nobody ever looked at any of them. <laughs> um, I personally am not a biblical scholar. In Unity, we take a lot of courses about interpreting the Bible metaphysically rather than literally. Many uni uh, Unity ministers like to talk about Bible verses. Um, I think Unity recommends this King James. No. No? New Standard? New International New version. International. Okay. Yeah. Unity worldwide. Um, but no, not only every Bible, but every book ever written probably is thought of for us. Um, I was forced to take Bible classes in ministerial school. It wasn't something that I chose to do. And, um, but I love the metaphysical interpretation. So to me, our lives, my life is full of stories ups, downs, challenges, struggles, accomplishments, achievements, joyous times, dis times of despair, and all of that is reflected in the stories in the Bible. So when we look, so when I look or take a, a passage from the Bible to speak about on Sunday, it's really, it's our story. That's how I look at it. Hmm. Uh, so I have um, probably three versions I pull from, because for me, language is everything. And so the wording sometimes on the new international version, to me, is, has been condensed too much to the point where it loses, it loses some of the symbolism that I think you can get from the King James Version. 
And then I also have the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, which is about this thick from Charles Fillmore, the full version of it. And so I can cross-reference anything between those. But they're really, I, I mean, the word Bible in, immediately says that there's really only one text that you're kind of operating from because the Buddhists don't work from the Bible. But I know all of us lean into so many other wisdom teachings for getting our message and defining our message that to say that we, you know, on, on, I guess on the Bible side, we work from maybe one or two versions. And then there's the rest of the world of religion and philosophy and teachings that we can pull from. Because with unity, it all kind of works together, in, in my view. Would you, would you agree? I would just say, add to that that when Charles Fillmore came up with the name Unity, it was because he and Myrtle had read everything that was available at the time on, on religion at that time in the 1880s, which of course is a little limited. And, and what they thought is like, look at this. Every, no matter what we read, we can see these little threads of truth that our every single faith tradition holds you know, kindness and generosity and, and forgiveness and things like that. So why don't we just take all of those and just call it unity and just focus on those? To Reverend Patricia, the CSL Ernest Holmes archives recently moved to Unity Village. Is there any discussion of merger? That's from jo Joanna Drury. Very good, Reverend Joanna. Um, I don't know. Have you heard anything? Uh, when I was there, it all I heard a lot of excitement about was the fact that the archives were being moved yeah. and that this was then perhaps the beginning of unifying yeah. it's, together it's as a message. We yeah. talked about since forever. About three years ago, they reached a reciprocal agreement where CSL and Unity could hire each other's ministers. Um, so that was the first step. Um, I suspect there's several years of ego overcoming to be done yet. Uh, this is to... You good? Okay. This is to all. What is the church's position on 2SLBGTQ plus people and gay marriage? I can start. Uh, well, what were you we talking about? What was Pierre Trudeau's comment way back? The government has... The government has no place in the bedrooms of the nation. Yeah, I would, I would say that we have no place in the bedrooms of anybody here or what they do or what they choose to do. It's not up to us. It's up to you to live your lives. So we have, we have an open position here. There's, no, there's nobody that can't come to unity. And, and I would say that for myself... The very fostering for that was, even before Unity, I've said this before, I was a, you know, I believed in the Star Wars methodology, the force and the dark side, uh, and I choose the force. So I've always kind of lived by the rule of, if you're not harming yourself or anybody else, what has it got to do with me? And if you're harming yourself and other people, then I'm, I might have to pay attention to that, right? I might have to take some responsibility as a citizen or a person that knows you and loves you and appreciates you. But other than that, it's... You know, it's it's open. Unity We're open. has always been known for inclusivity, 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 diversity. Um, you know, environmentalism, all that kind of woke stuff. It, it's like it's almost a non-issue for us. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. And I, I was, I think, possibly the first person in BC to marry a same-sex couple. They were both ministers from Washington State. Do you, do you want to answer? You're good? Okay. Uh, Reverend Patricia, please describe the differences between CSL and Unity's philosophies. That's from your friend. My, <laughs> her again. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend Joanne is a CSL minister that, who started her training when I was at, in Victoria. Um, really, they're so close, so close. And I'm, in my experience, having ministered in both, um, I find that on average, unity people are a little closer to the Christian roots than centers for spiritual living. 
but they're the same Christian roots. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, they're interchangeable. That's it. That's it. That's it. We have no more questions. How about anybody out now? We can we can take questions from the the floor. Any. Oh, okay. So, How was Centers for Spiritual Living for me? Yeah. Uh, Ernest Holmes was a generation behind um, the Fillmores. He it was in the. In, he was at his heyday in the 1950s. Um, I've forgotten what. Oh, they both studied with the same teachers from way back. Anna what, Curtis Hopkins was a teacher who taught them both. And then, then she taught uh, Phineas Parker Quimby, taught Emma Curtis Hopkins, who taught um, the Fillmores and Ernest Holmes and Anna Ricks Millet and, and pretty anybody who's ever been anybody in the New Thought movement. So um, Ernest Holmes would probably have possibly even taken classes with the Fillmores, but no doubt would have studied the Fillmores too, as well as a lot of Oriental uh, thought, thought and Boston Transcendentalists, Emerson and all those people. They were all active at the same time and influencing each other. Does that answer that? Village. The, the, so does does CSL have their own home base like uh, Unity has the village? Yeah, they're in um, Golden, Colorado, still. Okay. So they don't. Thank you, Joanna. They don't have a central building now, and that's the reason why. The archives they, they've, for those out streaming in, they've sold the building, and that's why the archives have moved, and most of their ministers are working from home, etc., so they don't require a, a central location. Religious science is, was the first name. Um, then uh, it's often known as the science of mind, and then a lot of people changed from religious science churches because they felt Center was a better name than church for people nowadays. And a lot of people used to come to them and say, is that Scientology? Yeah. No, it's not. Tom. I'll repeat it so the people streaming can hear it. So on the Unity Vancouver Island website, it says that you are inclusive and you respect each individual's right to choose a spiritual so what would be a thought or behavior that would not be accepted at UVI? So can I, uh, can I drill down a little on your question? Are you talking about in the spiritual realm or just in how they act with other people or how they treat other people? Because that would be a reason to ask them to not participate actively. Right. So, you know, uh, sexual sexual misconduct, you know, physical abuse, any verbal abuse of people would would we would ask them to not participate. And and how can we support you so that you can find a way to come to service is how I would want to approach it. I don't know if I would have the strength to do that with somebody who's maybe being angry and aggressive, but that that would make rule them out in my view. Uh, uh piece of dogma that for me is not acceptable and I, I wouldn't love anybody who, who holds it but for me the idea of a, a power of evil outside ourselves of, you know that that we are naturally sinners and that there's a power of evil unity teaches that there is one power which can be used for good or what we call evil and ultimately good and evil are constructs in our own minds you know we make them up so the, the idea of a of a something, a good power and an evil power out of a devil and a god sort of thing is not consistent with unity teachings. And, and while we think of that, Tom, I think you bring up a good point because even having a guest speaker come in that is teaching things that are not fundamental unity teachings, I would not want to invite them back. 
if they come, you know, if they were to come up here and teach from, as Patricia said, a, from dogma that does not stand with what our understanding is of the Christ consciousness and the one power, then they shouldn't be here to speak about it. Does that answer your question? I, I think also oh, okay. it, there's a difference between who we come in here as a speaker and a representative of our unity teachings. We are very, very careful about. Um, and anyone can walk through the doors. Uh, and if you do believe in that we are born in sin and that we uh, spend our lives in redemption mode, you probably wouldn't want to stay. You know, but they could. I mean, if they want to, right. they could, as long as they're not, you know, being abusive or harmful to anyone else. But so we naturally just attract, you know, who who is comfortable here and who's not. Okay. And then, Tom, you have a follow up? Okay. Can we go to Dustin first? Okay, so the question is, uh, how do we find peace in our lives, and how do we find God in our work? Well, the first thing that comes to me is they're not separate. That everything... Everything I do, for, so speaking for me personally, and this is, I think, what I would teach, is everything I do is in effort to be that peaceful, loving presence in life, whether it's personal connections or my day-to-day -day work, and to always be drawing on that, to be drawing, if you want to use the word source, to be drawing from source for everything I do think and act with people. And I, and I miss the mark a lot both personally and in my work life. So I, I don't think there's a separation. It's, it's always striving for that Christ within me to be fully present. Listen, my, Thomas once said, I never met a microphone I didn't like. Okay. Um, I, I'm reminded of a quote from Ernest Holmes, actually. And what he said was, if we could dwell in the absolute the absolute, there's nothing to fix. And as human beings, we dwell in the relative, which is our experience of what's happened now. So whenever I'm unhappy or stressed, I remind myself that this is the relative. This too will pass and ultimately, so I take a breath and remind myself my favorite affirmation, I am bigger than this and breathe. And Tom? Oh, sorry, Vicky. I didn't. I didn't see you past the mic. I apologize. Well. And and to your question as well, um, Dustin, that it's so. This is why I think it's so important for us to take time every single day or throughout the day, even just a moment to to reconnect and realign ourselves with the source because we are. Who knows what is going to happen to us at work, at home, in our relationships, you know, in the grocery store, right? And so I, I look at it as like a well that I'm filling up all the time so that hopefully when I'm met with some circumstance that um, surprises me or I don't like, that I'm still drawing on the source. Like in my, one of my favorite sayings is love always wins. And to just... Uh, so the, the practice is important, you know, and and... Certainly, uh, I, I can do it better than I could 20 years ago, and I still have lots to learn, for sure. Thanks. Okay, Tom. Well, for many of us, uh, each one of you are simply strangers, um, and to many who are looking online, uh, they wouldn't know you at all. So if you uh, were uh, to introduce yourself to a perfect stranger, and you only had one word to speak, <laughs> oh, he's so, good. <laughs> so the question is, if we were to introduce ourselves to a perfect stranger and we only had one word to introduce ourselves, what would that one, one word be? <laughs> what mood am I you in? You can't have four <laughs> words, <laughs> only one. I would say, I am peace. That's what I would say. Okay. 
If they ask me who I am, I would say peace. <laughs> it started over there. It's got to come this way, one by one. Available. Okay. Oh, and I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> In many ways. <laughs> <laughs> Anything I say is pointless at this at this juncture. <laughs> oh. Well, if I channel my mother, I would say doubting. Because I am named after doubting Thomas. But here's what here's what I'll say is my goal is to have so much love that I have to just give it away all the time. So my one word would be what I am pulling into myself is love. <laughs> uh, I think Matthew. Thank you for being so honest. Other than the books that were mentioned earlier, the Bible and such, what books do you turn to So what books do we turn to to reinforce our spirituality and our everyday living? And that's for each of us. So there's tons of new thought authors that are great, but I have two favorite books. One is The Prophet by Khalil Gibran, and the other is Who Ordered This Truckload of Dung by Asian Brahma. <laughs> Want to go to Vicky? You know, I've studied many, many different faith traditions, and I read the books, and I pick out what works for me, and I leave the rest. So there's no, you know, it's very selective. <laughs> and um, and I think the, ex well, for me, the experience is more, is more important than the reading. You know, I, I, we already know, all of us already know the principles and the, be you know, the behaviors and the experience that we want to not only put out, but to experience for ourselves. And we just, for myself, we just forget. So, but there is one line in The Untethered Soul that I thought was great, was he talks about, um, this by Michael Singer, how not to not close our hearts, to not close our hearts, which is so easy to do when we're, um, when things aren't going our way or something like that. And so all through the first three chapters, like, well, how, how do I not close my, you know, how do I keep my heart open? How do I keep my heart open? And then he says, don't close it. <laughs> so I love stuff like that. It's, it's, you know, like the Zen, you know, sayings, they just punch and I remember it. It's like, I can feel when my heart is closing. So, mm. yeah. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a hard question because I draw from many things, music, um, lyrics and songs, artistry can really uh, teach me things. I think the great artists in the world have wonderful things to say about humanity. And so I draw from that. I listen to so many podcasts and YouTube videos uh, that I don't know there's one book in particular. I really love the book, The Martian. Just say, you know, it has nothing to do with spirituality. It has everything to do with possibility. And for me, that I love to live in the possibility. But I probably lean on the Bible more than any other book that I lean on because I think that the teachings of Jesus, if we get rid of all of the noise around it, are the truth of how to live life. And that line that he says, if you follow me, it doesn't mean follow me. It means follow the teachings, follow the ways. Then your suffering will be relieved. And I don't know about you, but I don't like suffering. So I'd like to get rid of that suffering. Yeah. For each of us, what has been the highlight of our ministry? For me, that's easy. I have managed during the course of my ministry to grow a homegrown Canadian minister. Ta da!
I would say when I'm teaching or doing a retreat or a class and somebody just, you can just feel and sense that it's like, oh, I get it. I'm more than this body, than this experience. And I know that their life is going to change after that. So that's one of my high points. Uh, well, there's many external um, goals and um, victories, I think, that have come my way on the path of ministry. The, for me, as of now, the highlight is really the internal understanding of who I am and the change in my life. If you were to go back seven years to the person I was then and the way I thought and the way I treated people, uh, you would not recognize the person here today. So there's a huge, huge expansion of who I am as a person um, internally and how I process and how I think and how I can, can you know, control my emotions in situations and try to, try to stay in a, a level keel. And so for me, as of this point, I'm very new at this, the highlight has been the change in me, which then inspires me, right? Because if, well, if I can get this, like, and I was, I was an idiot, right? So, man, you guys, are, you're there. Like, it's going to be so easy for all of you because I was a doorknob. Yeah. All right. Any last one? Any last one question from anybody? Burning desire to know something? Yes. Oh, so somebody's asking, what is the village? And what's your name? Carmen. Hi, Carmen. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Uh, well, the, the, so Unity, do you want, you, you've been there more than I have. Hi. You can. Hi, welcome. I'm glad you found us. Um, so Unity, the Fillmore's, Myrtle and Charles Fillmore, the co-founders of Unity, lived in Missouri. And um, Charles Fillmore's previous occupation was a real estate agent. And so in, in the early 1900s, he started to buy some property outside of Kansas City, and then they bought more and they bought more, and now there's 1,500 acres of property. And on that, the Unity School was built. It's the home of the Daily Word, our, our daily uh, insp ins inspirational booklet. It's where 24 hours of prayer continues for us, Silent Unity, our prayer service. And um, it's, um, I was gonna say one more thing about that. And there's a hotel where you can stay. The students, you know, go there to study. And um, it's not that far out of Kansas City anymore. Kansas City has spread. So it's really a beautiful oasis. There are streams. It's a wildlife uh, nature sanctuary. It's got some heritage buildings on it. There's beautiful fountains. And, and just to give some history, if I can jump in, is that one of the things that uh, we just had the 100th year anniversary of the Daily Word. So that's been printed, and there are the 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 actual subscribers to the Daily Word. There are more subscribers that are not Unity than there are Unity. It it goes across all faiths and traditions that people subscribe to the Daily Word. The prayer hotline is over a hundred years. So before there was a phone service, they would get the letters in every day at 11 a.m. The letters would arrive. They would have a moment of pause of prayer. And then they had this team of people that would open the prayer requests and they would start typing replies back to those people and then mailing the replies back to them for their prayer. And that's been 24 seven, seven days a week for over a hundred years that they have been doing the daily prayer or the, the prayer hotline. Yeah. Wow. Wow, thank you. Yeah. And, and of course, it's affirmative prayer, right? So when you phone to get prayer treatment, that, that, that's what they call it, a treatment, it's not praying to a God asking for help. It's praying that we already know who we are, that we are whole, we are complete, that this is already done, the best outcome will be what happens like it, it's a place of affirming what is not trying to ask for something and like we're weak and unfortunate it's not coming from that place of lack 
So I hope that answered, yeah, that answers your question. Yeah, great. Yes. Oh, Unity Village is where the school is. Yeah, the college, yeah. It's, well, there's, there's, there's a couple, because there's UWSI, Unity Worldwide Spiritual Institute, which I went through. There's also the Urban School of Ministry, which is located in Detroit, which, is, which was much more on the ground. I mean, as, it, as, the, as the title is, Urban School of Ministry, and both of those are a path to ordination. And I have friends, in, I have friends that have gone through both sides, as I'm sure you, you have as well, right? We have friends on, that have gone through the Urban School or have gone through UWSI. And we were fortunate when we were in Unity Village, Thomas and I, just a couple of weeks ago to go uh, attend the ordination and graduation ceremonies. And so how many ministers were ordained? There were 60 ministers. Yeah. And, and might have been 60 to 80 ministers and LUTs that were blessed and welcomed. And they were from Africa as well, right? Yes, Nigeria. many, many from Nigeria. Yeah. yeah. And they were online and they were... You know, we got to see them online and they were accepting their ordination. Yeah. Yeah, it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, the year that I was ordained, I was the only Canadian. Yeah. Yeah. What are we grateful for today is the next question. I am so grateful to see Cindy. Cindy, stand up. Yay, Cindy! Woo! Cindy's been doing the executive kind of work for us for 12 years or so. And it's since COVID has been working from home, but she's still very, very much a precious part of it. And to see Nico back. Yes. And to see, see this room getting close to the number I'd like to see every week. Yeah. Thank you for being here. And to have our vocals back, yeah. our vocalists back, like all today is a great, you know, um, yeah, they're going to, yeah, we're going to make them sing. <laughs> you will sing and you will like it. <laughs> I think what I'm grateful for is that this, us being in this place at this time is an outworking of divine order. You know, this, uh, our, this whole community, Unity Vancouver Island has been through a lots of ups and downs over the last three or four years. And um, to just be willing and courageously uh, step into the next rendition of what this looks like, <clears throat> excuse me, and being open and willing to explore lots of possibilities. And I know, Cindy, I am so happy to see you as well because she's like the woman behind the scenes. Like every time I need something, it's like, just ask Cindy and she tells me so. <laughs> yeah, it's great. For, wow, that is such a big question. I have so much to be grateful for today. I'm grateful for... This, I'm grateful for our audio video team that handles my panic as I run around here trying to do too many things and makes all of this work. And sometimes it doesn't work, but nobody loses their mind and they keep coming back to try again. Like, hey, one day we're going to perfect this thing, you know, and then we can stop. When we perfect it, then we're never doing audio video again. That's it. It's over. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. On a personal note, I'm super grateful that today is the 18th birthday of my twin daughters. Yes, I know. And, and sort of a, a larger responsibility for my daughters, it is also my mother-in-law's 80th birthday today, as we gave her a birthday gift of having twins on her birthday. <laughs> And so we'll be celebrating that a little later today. And I'm, you know, I'm super grateful for that. And I'm super grateful to be here as always. Yeah. That's it. I'm getting the word that this is how she does it. She does it very quietly. I think we need to wrap it up. <laughs> it's my mentor, everybody. <laughs> and my other mentor. Yes. That's another thing I'm grateful for. Look at how, look at what I have been able to be served by to figure out how to be a minister. Like, look at the examples I have sitting beside me. It's just like, it's amazing. It is. All right, thank you, everyone.